This video is on cellular respiration. Okay, the first thing you need to know is that respiration, often in your exams called aerobic respiration, is when an organism obtains energy from some kind of organic molecule. So it's not just about breathing. Now, an organic molecule could be protein, sugars, or fats. Usually we talk about sugars. It's the most common thing, or carbohydrates. So here we have a person. They put food and oxygen into their body. This is the energy that they take in. And they breathe out CO2. Now, on the other side of things, you have a plant which takes in CO2 and gives out oxygen. So hence the great circle of life and why we need plants around, why it's good not to destroy rainforests. And plants grow from food in the ground. So we all do respiration. Some of it is aerobic, meaning we use oxygen to do it. And some of it is anaerobic, which means we don't use oxygen. Now, the purpose of respiration, this is what you need to remember, is to release the energy from food. So we're going to talk about how you do that. It's slightly different here for plant cells and animal cells, so we'll delve into each one. Now, you have mitochondria in both cells. Now, they're not very common in plant cells, and there are lots and lots of them in animal cells, but they're there in both. And this is the place where respiration happens. So let's zoom into these mitochondria and see how it works. In mitochondria, you have an outer membrane, but you also have this inner folded membrane. The outer membrane here holds it all together. The inner membrane is where the energy process happens. There's fluid between the two, and the word you need to know is cystae. This is the folds of the inner membrane. Now, this big surface area and why it's so folded is where ATP creation happens. And if you remember, ATP is the energy of cells. So if you have lots and lots of surface area, you can make lots and lots of ATP. And that is what mitochondria do. And it doesn't just happen in any fold in the middle. It happens right around this inner membrane across all of these folds. And of course, there's enzymes right throughout this fluid in between the outer and inner membrane that helps ATP creation actually happen. Okay, so now we're going to look at the exact reaction of how respiration occurs. So respiration is when you have oxygen and carbohydrate, it's like a sugar, and that's going to turn into carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, water, and some energy in the form of ATP. Now, if you don't like the chemical reaction, you can remember the word equation as well. You have to remember that you breathe in oxygen, you add sugar, or it's kind of glucose, and you're going to breathe out or give out carbon dioxide, water, and ATP in the process. Now, there's about 28 to 38 molecules of ATP, which gets pushed out for every six molecules of oxygen and each glucose molecule. Now, you don't need to remember these numbers. It's not important, but you do need to remember this equation. It's really good to trot out in the middle of your exam. So let's see what factors affect this equation. In cellular respiration, the amount of nutrients is important. If you run out of oxygen, you can't make any more ATP. The temperature, again, is always going to affect it because enzymes help this process happen and temperature affects that. Same with the pH and the other enzyme activity features. And also the state of a cell. So if it's in growth and repair, for example, it's going to need a lot more energy than if it's just sitting there pretty static. And that can be seen. If you see an acorn, that's a static seed. All the energy potential is there. There's cells inside it, but it doesn't really mean much. Compared with if you have a growing shoot, a lot's going on and it's going to need a lot of energy to do that. So where do we need the most energy? And therefore, where is the most mitochondria which makes the energy? This is in the active cells, things which are constantly doing things. So for example, your muscle cells constantly working, they need a lot of mitochondria and a lot of energy to work, a lot of ATP. Same with shoots when something is growing. Now it could be a person going through puberty or a plant growing. These need a lot of ATP and energy. Your liver is constantly working, although you might not know it. It's constantly metabolizing different molecules and chemicals within your body. But even these things aren't equal. Muscle cells are highly active. You're using them even to do push-ups, pull-ups, to walk around different places. Your liver is constantly active, maybe not quite as much as your muscles, because it's going all of the time. And shoots probably less so, because they are growing, but it's not quite the same as a big muscle. So lots of activity means lots of energy and lots of mitochondria. Less energy, less movement, less growth and repair means less mitochondria needed. So here's what you need to know from the video. You need to know that aerobic respiration is the process where organisms get energy from organic molecules. So energy is ATP, organic molecules, usually glucose, sugar, carbohydrates, sometimes fats and proteins. So the purpose of respiration, why we do it, is to get the energy from food. And that means you're turning oxygen and sugar 
into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And if you can remember this equation, it's gonna help you and you can write it out in your exam answers. This is respiration happening right here. It's a really nice way to write it without any explanation needed. And this creates 28 to 38 ATP per reaction. So the factors that are gonna affect your cellular respiration are the amount of nutrients that you have. You have lots of nutrients, you're gonna get lots of energy and you're gonna feel good. Kinda of like if you don't eat very much food, you don't feel like doing very much. Same thing, temperature. Enzymes work faster, like we know, at fight higher temperatures, right through until they get ruined. And finally, the state of a cell. If you're having either a really active cell or something in growth and repair, it needs lots of energy and lots of ATP, and it will need lots of mitochondria to work. And also, nature, you're gonna have high energy requirements. And this relates back to the muscles or growing shoots that requires more energy as well. And finally, and I know this is a little bit out of order, you need to know about mitochondria. Particularly, there's an outer membrane right around the outside. There's an inner membrane which folds and folds to what's called cristae. And they have a big surface area to increase the amount of ATP that can be made. So ATP is created in this inner membrane, in these folds or these cristae. And of course, enzymes help a lot in the ATP creation process. The purpose of this is to release the energy from food. So really active muscles, really active cells are gonna need lots of mitochondria compared to less active cells are not gonna need so many. Let's look at a question now. The process of aerobic respiration is an essential one to cell processes, both for animals and plants. So the amount of respiration though can be different depending on the location and the function of the cell in an organism. So the structure of cells can also be different to suit the levels of respiration that are occurring. So now we need to discuss aerobic respiration. This is what we've just been learning about. Using oxygen to create energy. And in our answers, we need to discuss respiration in terms of the purpose, what's needed and what's produced, and the structure and the function of the organelle where it takes place. We're gonna discuss as well the reasons and the difference between the structure of the different cells. Let's look at an answer for that. So firstly, the purpose of aerobic respiration, to convert energy from food, from nutrients, into usable energy from cells. And then we're gonna release waste products as well, although you don't need to include it. The formula is written here now, really good if you can remember this, and you can remember that there's 28 to 38 ATP created each time is good. So this is for glucose, for sugar, but fats and processes can also be consumed. So this is answering the second part of the question, saying what is needed, what products are there, and what is produced in that respiration process. So this is what the formula explains. Now you could say glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide, water, and energy, or ATP, in words, and it would also work out for you. So this takes place in the mitochondria, and they have an outer membrane, which regulates the passage of material, so that's how we get oxygen, that kind of thing, and an inner membrane, and this is compartmentalized into lots of folds called cristae. Now the benefit of this is you get more surface area in the mitochondria, so you can make more ATP. The mitochondria from cells that have lots of demand from ATP, such as muscles, contain even more cristae, so you get more mitochondria with more cristae, meaning more ATP and more energy, which is required. And the number of mitochondria in a cell varies widely by organism and tissue type, so there's so much variation. There are more in animal cells because animals are more active than plants, and many cells just have one mitochondria, whereas really active cells might have more, for example, muscles or glands or whatever's highly active. We talked about liver. Even up to several thousand, like in a liver cell. So variation in number is related to the energy requirements of each cell. Lots of energy, you need lots of mitochondria. And that's why I've written the higher the energy demand, the greater the number. So that is cellular respiration.